One hand, you've got tic-tac-toe. All I need to know is whether you won or lost to make an AI work. The other side, we've got chess, where frankly, whether you won or lost is not even in the play until you get towards the end of the game. You need to use short-term and mid-term strategy and tactics to make the game work at all. And then you've got Mancala, which is kind of both. Right now, the AI in my game is a little bit broken. It's making some really bad short-term decisions in exchange for some long-term decisions, but even those long-term decisions aren't very good. And let me explain why it's kind of broken right now. But to do that, let me do briefly, quickly go over how the Minimax algorithm works that I'm using right here. This is a decision tree. So think of this as me, I'm making a decision and I've got to choose between this move versus this move. And this is my opponent. And he, when he has his chance to make a turn, he'll choose between this one and this one. And then me again, then the opponent again, then me again. So this is looking four moves into the future, all the possibilities that could happen. And of course, in McCall, I won't have two choices. I'm gonna have like <laughs> four or five, maybe even as high as 50 possible moves because you got repeat turns and stuff like that. Uh, but this is the general idea. And, and at each stage, uh, you'll either choose the minimum or the maximum value based on whether it's your decision to make 10 I'll choose between I'll choose 10 over 5 versus the opponent's move to make he will choose the lowest uh, 10 versus plus infinity um, so essentially the minimum and maximum values get percolated up until you make a decision about what's the best way to win or in this particular example the best way to lose um, it works fairly well but the problem is is that for some games, this is my pseudo picture, it's actually a picture of the internet, but the number of branches and decisions you can make is doesn't, isn't a quick, easy diagram like this. It's a hugely complicated one, and you're not going to be able to see to the end of the game. Uh, for example, in tic-tac-toe, it's actually possible to do what computer science calls solving the game, where you can actually consider all possible moves ever possible to make in the game and actually come up with the exact perfect way to play. Um, Tic-tac-toe is a very easy example of that. I've done it myself in other conditions. And so all you have to really consider in an AI for tic-tac-toe is whether you win, <laughs> have a draw, or you lose. That's it. That's all you have to really think about, and you always make the right decisions. On the other hand, another game like chess that's not good enough. I mean, in the long term, that is the strategy. You want to either checkmate the king, come to a stalemate, or get checkmated. Those are the three possible options at the end of the game. And you really, what you're shooting for is to checkmate the king. So that's your goal. And the strategic goal is a good one. The problem is you can't actually use that in a chess algorithm uh, for one simple reason. You can't look towards the end of the game to find out those numbers. So essentially, if you look, say, 20 moves ahead in a game of chess, all the possible moves you can right now are all zero, every single one of them. Uh, well, a few exceptions, that'll be minus one, but <laughs> they'll pretty much be all zero. The reason why is I can't see the end. It's too far away. There isn't a computer powerful enough to see to the end of the game. So what you have to do instead is augment that with short-term and mid-term strategies and tactics, uh, mostly tactics. So in, in this particular case, for example, you might consider, do I have one or both of my knights? Does my opponent have one or both of their knights? Do I have my queen still? Does my opponent have their queen? And I'll judge moves based on whether I lose knights and queens and other things. Do I have control of the center of the board? Do I have, would I lose control of the center of the board? Um, those are all strategies that will help you get to the point where you can, you can uh, checkmate the king. But until then, uh, until you get towards the very end of the game, you really aren't looking at the final end. You can't because it's not visible. It's too far away for you to see. It's over the horizon, as you might think. Um, Moncala is similar to that. It's actually between these two options. This is an extreme and this is another extreme. Moncala is in between because my end game isn't a simple win-lose. It's all based on, like in this particular game shown here, I've got four seeds in my pit and nine seeds in the other pit. So you could say I'm down minus five. So if I just look so many moves ahead, I could just take the current scores possible and use that algorithm we saw on the first slide to actually come up with a decent answer as far as what to do next. And that's what I'm doing right now. The problem is it's not really good enough because I'm not seeing it's the end of the game still over the horizon. 
Just because I'm doing well in six moves doesn't mean I'll win the game. And I'll also make what will appear to be really stupid decisions, giving up seeds and all kinds of things, because the, the long-term view makes you blind to the short-term benefits of what you can do in the next move. Um, and so it makes sense to also add tactical analysis uh, to the long-term strategic vision. And uh, one of those things you can do is, for example, do pit analysis. You know, if I make this particular move here and I leave a pit empty right here and say I, I moved something out of here and I left this empty, well, that puts pressure on my opponent because now either he lets me take, like all I have to do is move one here, he either lets me take his two pieces and I gain three on the next move, or he jumps here, or he'd say take something with a lot of pits in it and he covers over it so he can't I can't make that capture anymore. It puts pressure on him. He has fewer options in his next turn. That is a short-term tactic or short-term strategy. I mean, it's a tactical move, but it's a short-term strategy. I'm not gonna get into tactics versus strategy in this discussion, but <laughs> the key is, is it's a short-term analysis. The problem is what's the value What's the numeric, because it's a computer, I need numbers. What's the numeric value of leaving this pit empty? I don't know. <laughs> it's called genetic analysis. What it is, is essentially it's, you create a, pos, a population of solutions, what we'll call a genome. Um, and in it, it contains a bunch of genes, which is the individual weights of values of each of the possible tactical maneuvers. And you, and you essentially, you, you create a parent group that has certain characteristics and then you test them all and then you extinct a percentage of the population and you create children from the parents that each have genetic variations and then you run that whole group again and see who survives and if the child survives it becomes it survives and it doesn't get extincted and maybe the parent will go extinct and you do that over and over and over again in kind of a ruthless evolutionary tree over and over again until you find the right answers that work best and always the different AIs are playing against each other and fighting for superiority and if they fight and win they survive to the next generation and if they don't win they die off and the superior child becomes the new winners and uh, I'll show you this in code it's actually kind of a fun exercise it's, it's a very slow algorithm I'm probably going to be running this stuff for weeks <laughs> trying to find the ideal set of numbers. But the thing is, I don't have to come up with the math to figure out what the numbers are. The system will evolve to the right set of numbers. And uh, let's take a look at some code and I'll show you what you mean. Okay, I'm not gonna show you every tiny little minutia of this because there's a lot I've written. <laughs> um, it'll be in the uh, GitHub archive, so you can take a look at it if you have any questions. Um, but I do now have a file called tactics, which is right here. Actually, I have a lot of this loaded up already. So, tactics, I'm gathering the value of an empty pit, uh, both for one that's across from another empty pit, that's this column here, or the value of an empty pit across for a, um, a, a multiplier for if there are other seeds in the other pit. So if there's two and the multiplier right here is one, then it's worth a value of two to me. And if there's if this is a multiplier of three, then two being in a cross pit and it now has a value of six. So this is a multiplier column. And then we have the easy repeat. That's where if I leave, say, two, two seeds in a pit that's two pits away from my kala or my store, then uh, that has a certain value to me as well. But not all pits are equal. So pit zero, a uh, pit that's one spot away from the store, this has a different value than a pit that's, say, six values away from the store. So uh, they're, they're all relative. This is all about distances from my own store. Okay, let's go to where I'm actually generating uh, my technical numbers. I'll go through some of the comments here at the beginning. Um, I've, uh, first off, I've got various combinations I have to take into account because these numbers will change based on how the game's being played. So am I going first or am I going second? How many peeds or seeds are in the pits? Is it four, three, five, or six? Uh, that's not in order because I want to do four first so I can just visually look at how the algorithm's working. Um, do I want to look one, two, three, or up to six moves ahead? Uh, what's the capture rules? What's the end of game rules? So I, I would go through all the variations of that. Um, and so 
what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be doing a start here in the middle. I have an extinction rate set. I have a population size. So I'm going to consider 20 different combinations of values for my um, my tactical array, my tactical list of values, which I'm calling genes because this is a genetic algorithm. So I have uh, 20 different pop 20 individuals in the population. I'm going to run through 40 generations of extinction and evolution. Um, I'm going to play one each time where I test the quality of all the players. Uh, that's a fitness algorithm it's called. What it's going to happen is each one of these 20 genomes is going to play each of the other 20 genomes or the other 19 to figure out who has the best ranking. Um, I'm only going to play one against each other uh, later on. I put that in there because it's possible if I add some randomness to the opponent, um, then I might want to play it, uh, say, 50 or 100 times just to kind of average out to a good number for the fitness. Um, and then how will I do the variations from generation to generation? Uh, right now I'm supporting a, a minor, major, or cross um, uh, variation. Uh, essentially a minor variation literally means I can go up one or down one on each one of those values I show, we showed earlier. Uh, a big variation means I can go plus 100 to minus 100. Uh, I might actually, actually, I may have cranked that up a little bit higher, but it's just a random number how much it goes up or down. And then a third possibility is like I'm just copying a value from one genome from another genome. Um, here I have my proto genome, and all the genes start out at one, kind of like we saw earlier in my uh, default tactics. Everything starts out as one. And uh, let's go back to the generator here. And uh, we'll just run through the algorithm real fast. It's, uh, I'm not going to go through every single detail because it'll probably bore you to tears. <laughs> uh, but so we start at the beginning, set everything up. I'm building right now three islands of evolution. That way uh, the, the solution that it comes up with with one set of generations might be different than the solution it comes up with a different set of generations because I got a lot of randomness involved. And what I do is I do three islands of evolution, and then I, at the very end, I create a world championship where I smash them all together and see who wins out of the three separate uh, solutions come up by the individual islands. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm working through the individual islands. Um, I do an extinction event against each generation. I do the reproduction, so filling it out back to the population size. Um, I do trials, and that's where all the pieces play each other. And then I do a sort to see who's the winners. Now during the, the repeat, after it does the sort, it does the extinction, killing off all the weakest genomes. And just keeps going over and over again. And then at the very end, I store a winner's list of the top 10. And that's for each island. So at the very end, I'll have a group of 30 winners. And then I do, then I do the championship for the world. And it does the trials, does the does the sort, the extinction, but I do this for, I think, 40 generations. And uh, it just finds the best and evolves from the best of all the island winners until you come back to the winners list and then you choose the absolute winner. And then the absolute winner is written to a JSON file, which I put into this directory right here, uh, tactics work. And here's some earlier works done here. Let's look at this. Um, you can see the lifespan of the particular winner, what the final score was, in this case it was 16,000. Um, and here's the genes. Instead of all being ones, now we have different numbers here representing what was the final solution that worked the best so far. Now this is not guaranteed to be the perfect solution, simply the best solution found given the competition between the genes. Um, and then I've got another program called Apply Tactics, which basically creates a uh, results uh, data file. In fact, it's called Tactics Data. It builds that file using all those JSON files. And it comes back with this. T being a dictionary, and this is for each scenario. So this is uh, player, player goes first, four pits per, um, per house on startup. Um, I forget what one stands for. 
Uh, this is the capture tactic or check capture rule zero, and this is end of game rule zero. And there down here is end of game rule one, end of game rule two, three, and then back to zero again while it moves this to the different capture rule. So essentially it's trying out all the different rules so you can run with different numbers. Now I've only generated three of these files, which took uh, a couple hours to generate just three of these files. Evolution's slow, <laughs> really slow. Um, and I've got the algorithm right now that if it's missing a file, it just repeats what the last file had. So it's got a lot of redundant data in here. So I'm gonna be running this thing for probably about a week or so to get the final results. I'm gonna continue working on the app and other things. I'll just let this run in the background on some other computers. If I get desperate, I might go find, build, buy some uh, time and space on some of the cloud servers out there that are much, much faster than my own personal machines and uh, get it crunched out even quicker. Uh, but I'll see what I can get done on my own local machines uh, just to give you an idea what it looks like when I'm running it It's gonna look to see if it's already worked on the file So you'll see it skip right here the first files that it's already finished now it's starting to work on this one Player first seeds four, look ahead one Capture rule zero end of game rule three and what it's doing here is here's each of the genomes each of the survivors so far um, Right now, that's all sequential because it's coming up with the first generation. So there were 20 genomes, and they all have a lifespan of zero. Here, some of our first genomes have a lifespan of one, some have a lifespan of zero, and uh, they're getting scored. They all fight each other, and uh, now we're on generation two of our first island. And they'll keep going down for 40 generations until it gets a, uh, a winner, a winner of the island. And then it'll play all three islands together and get the winner of the world. And then I'll write the JSON file and then I'll be able to generate the uh, tactics data PY file that I'll be using in the app later. So uh, I'll run this for a week and see what it looks like. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank you.